I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're in the holiday mood like I am. I want to talk about anxiety today. And why should we give anxiety importance? Because anxiety is the root cause of every single disease that exists. <clears throat> you understand when the body, when the body is in homeostasis, which means it's relaxed, <clears throat> your state of mind is happy, the body's relaxed. You have an intelligence within you that is designed to keep you alive, keep your organs working. Automatic detoxification happens without you having to do fancy detox plans. Your body has an intelligence for you to survive and to live a long and a healthy life without the requirement of doing so much that we do to keep our health in place. If human beings master the art of staying relaxed, of trying to be happy, okay? When I say trying to be happy is yes, our physiological state is to be happy. When a child is born, they're not born with negativity, they're not born with self-doubt. You pick this up along the way and then that becomes your nature. That becomes the way, the more you think about it, that becomes your new thought process, your mindsets, your belief systems. We pick it up. But the physiological state of the human body is to be relaxed and is to be happy. And when we're happy and when we're relaxed, everything gets better. You cannot heal a disease that exists in the human body. When the mind is unhappy, the mind is stressed and the body is stressed. It's impossible. You can have the best medication, you can have the best nutrition, it will not be effective. First, we have to create an environment. Everything works in an environment. You can have the best seeds for a plant, but the environment outside is not conducive. The seed will not grow. That's what we learn from nature. And we human beings are products of nature. We operate best and we thrive best when the biological parameters that define us work in harmony with each other. Nutrition with our cells movement with our muscles, sleep as a restorative function, emotional wellness creates what is going to happen in the physical body. So when we're anxious, it's unnatural to be chronically anxious. It's natural to get anxious, but it is unnatural to be chronically anxious or chronically stressed. And what is unnatural produces disharmony. Disharmony produces the wrong environment. And hence, we can say that disharmony leads to discomfort and disease. Coming back to anxiety, before we even start, everyone wants an action plan. But first, revisit your mindset and your thoughts about anxiety and stress. The problem is that everyone has labeled anxiety and stress as negative. It's not negative. Anything that you label as negative will lead to a negative feeling. That negative feeling will lead to a negative behavior and that negative behavior or that negative action will lead to your experience. For example, you wake up with negative thoughts. Your entire day is going to be negative because your thoughts become your feelings. Your feelings become your behavior. Your behavior results in an experience and your experience of that day is negative because you have or you gave attention to negative thoughts. No human being can be without negative thoughts. You could, be the most <coughs> you could be the most spiritual person, but negative thoughts will arise. <clears throat> it is how much of attention and how much of energy you give to those negative thoughts. The more attention and the more energy you give those negative thoughts, the bigger they grow. The same way, the more attention and the more energy you give to the positive thoughts or the feel-good thoughts or the thoughts that make you feel nice and happy, that's going to grow. So coming back to your mindset, Anxiety is not negative. Stress is not negative. The way you relate to what is making you anxious, the way you relate to what is stressing you is what makes your stress negative or positive. Let me give you an example. You're in a work environment. You have deadlines. <clears throat> now, while these deadlines can seem to be a heavy negative stress for many of the employees, those same deadlines can be a motivating positive stress for other employees. It motivates them to give their best, they work better under pressure, they work better under stress. The same deadline creates two different reactions. So you see the stressor is never the problem. It is the way you relate to it that is the biggest problem. So let's come back down to anxiety, which is the topic for today's video. Anxiety is a survival mechanism. You need it, I need it, we need it. If we're not anxious 
about the fact that we need to make money to maintain our families, have a livelihood, buy nice things, go for holidays, we would become complacent. But the anxiety of drives us to do that. So, oh, if I don't have money, I can't put food on the table. If I don't have money, I can't provide shelter to myself or my family. If I don't have money, I can't take that holiday that I want to take. So that anxiety becomes a mechanism to trigger us off to a particular action. So I must work or I must set up a business or I should do something where I can earn some money. So you see, anxiety <clears throat> is a natural survival mechanism. Every human being needs it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Example, you're crossing a road and a car's coming towards you at a high speed. It's only because you get anxious that triggers you into the fight and flight response, into a stress response, that I'm gonna be hit by that car, let me jump onto the other side of the road or jump out of the way of the car. If anxiety didn't kick in, you would be run over by the car. So stop seeing anxiety and stress as negative. Start seeing it for what it is. The problem with anxiety and people's anxiety causing disease because of the raised cortisol levels and adrenaline levels and then that in turn raises inflammation, your estrogen goes up, your progesterone comes down, your testosterone comes down, your thyroxine comes down, your blood sugar levels go up, your heart rate goes up. All of this is perfect for a short period of time. But if you continue the anxiety and you continue the stress, these levels stay high or low and that's what leads to all of the complications you have, including the diseases that most people have. Chronic inflammation is connected with every single disease. That's why medically, diseases are categorized as inflammatory conditions caused by chronic inflammation. So what do we do? Anxiety is good for us, but if we get anxious and we do not take action, then that anxiety now grows more and more. Your fears become bigger and bigger. They become illusions. They become stories that may never be true. Like they say, worry is a down payment on a plan. You know, I mean, uh, worry is a down payment on a problem that may never exist. Think about all the times you've worried about something. Did it come true? In most cases, no. So the moment you get anxious, the first thing you need to ask yourself once you felt the emotion is, what can I do? There is always an action that you can take. At the same time, anxiety hits people more and it's out of control when people are trying to be in control all the time. If you are that person who is trying to be in control of everything that happens in your life, your anxiety is gonna get more and more because guess what? Most of us are not in control of anything. There are very few things that are within our control. Everything else has to be surrendered accepted or let go of. So the point is, anxiety hits you right now. Is there something you can do? Do it. If you don't do it, that anxiety will grow bigger and bigger. To diffuse anxiety, you gotta take action. So if you're standing in the middle of that road and that car's coming closer and closer and you're not taking action, your stress and fear is gonna grow more and more and then you get hit by the car. But if you took that action and jumped out of the part of the car, you're saved. And as you take that you know, huge sigh of relief, you take in more oxygen, that signals to your brain, drop your cortisol levels, drop your adrenaline, the stressor is over and you come back to homeostasis. So you see, whenever you're anxious, if you're not taking action, your anxiety is gonna destroy you slowly and steadily, but surely. There is always action you can take. And if there is no action that you can take, like let's say for example, you're on the way to the airport, Okay, and there's a lot of traffic. You're gonna miss your flight, you know it. Now this is out of your control. There's nothing that you can do except surrender, except, okay, I'm missing my flight. Now, what can I do? You can only move to action when you're in a mode of acceptance. Now you can call up the airline, you can see if you can get a different seat, you can, you know, there are so many things that you can do. But when you're stuck and you become a slave to, an, to anxiety, you don't take any action. It only grows more and more. So whenever you're anxious, the first thing that you need to ask yourself, what can I do right now? There is always something that you can do. And if you can't do anything, then accept, let go. Because while you accept and let go, now there will be new actions that come up. Okay, I can let go of this. Now what can I do to make sure this doesn't happen again? What can I learn from this? 
So anxiety is only a trigger. It's a positive trigger. You make it negative. You make it scary. You make it filled with fear. That's all the doing of you. And only you can be responsible to diffuse anxiety. While some people may cause us anxiety, some events in life may cause us anxiety. Yes, absolutely, it's not your fault, but it is only you who can fix that by taking action. Most people don't wanna take action because they don't wanna take responsibility. So instead, they try to use complain, blame, finding fault, victim mode, how could this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? I've done so much and yet it happened to me. Yeah, fine, you're right, but it's happened to you, move on. What actions can you take to prevent this from happening again? But right now, you gotta move on, you gotta suck it up and you gotta move on. That's how life is. Complaining, blaming, going on, nagging, negativity, these are all shields that we use because we don't wanna take responsibility. The ego and the pride is hurt and we wanna protect that ego and pride and we don't do it. We don't do it, we don't take responsibility that okay, yes, it doesn't matter if I'm a celebrity, it doesn't matter if I'm a CEO, it doesn't matter how rich I am, it doesn't matter who the hell I am. At the end of the day, I'm a human being and I am entitled to get anxious. Bad crap can happen to me. People cannot like me, they don't have to like me. So when you get too mixed up and attached to vanity, to your position, to how much money you have, to the power that you have, you lose focus of the fact that you're human and that anything can happen to you. And then you get into a why me attitude. Why not you? Why not you? Is a question you need to ask yourself. Let me give you another example. You're anxious now because you're putting on a lot of weight. Okay, fine, you're anxious. That's a trigger to tell you that you've been doing something wrong. So now can I reflect? What, what's my behavior over the last three months that has made me put on weight? Have I been overeating? Have I been starving myself? Have I been indisciplined with my exercise? Have I been sleep deprived? Have I been chronically stressed? Have I been eating too much of outside food? Good, now you have some action points that you can work on. Number two, maybe you'll get a nutritionist. Maybe you'll take help. Maybe you'll study on the internet. Maybe you'll speak to friends who have lost weight. Action point again, but you don't take those actions. You wallow in your self-pity. How could this happen to me? Now I'm ugly. People won't look at me. You know, your self-confidence goes down. Your anxiety gets the better of you because you didn't move to action. Let me give you another example, a worst case scenario. We deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Luke, I got cancer. Fine, go through the emotion, cry. It shouldn't happen to everyone, but now it's happened. And once you've gone through the emotion and you've accepted that, yes, there's a cancer in my body. I'm anxious, I'm fearful. What are the actions I can take? Can I get a good medical team? Can I change my nutrition? Can I change my lifestyle? I need family support. I need to change X, Y, Z. But you're moving to action. So your anxiety gets lesser and lesser. But if you've not moved to action and you're still a slave of anxiety, what happens? It only grows more and more. So you see, anything in life requires action. A lot of people out there, they just want to get rich and they want to feel abundant and have all the wealth in the world, but they don't want to put in the work. Where's the action? You really think visualization works without action? Visualization is super, super powerful. My entire life is built on visualization. It's about having a crystal clear goal, knowing how you will feel when that goal is realized, even before it's happened, and then surrendering that goal and doing the work. Doing the work. Not trying to micromanage, not trying to overwork or underwork, but doing what you need to do for the goal to happen. A lot of people think visualization is sitting on the couch and dreaming and making affirmations, but they don't want to put in the work. They don't want to change their attitude. It doesn't work that way. Everything in life requires the work to be put in. So be careful of the people who say, you don't have to work, you just got to be smart. You got to be smart and you got to work hard. It's as simple as that. That's the bitter, ugly truth. So coming back to anxiety, when you get anxious, okay, the first thing that you need to ask yourself, what can I do and do it? If there's nothing you can do, accept it, let go, surrender. And there's still something that you can do. You can pray for guidance, you can pray for comfort, you can call up a friend, you can get some emotional support. There is always an action that you can. But if you resort to just complaining and blaming and fault finding and all of that stuff, you don't get better. You mess it up for you, you make the anxiety more and you mess it up for the people around you. 
So remember in life, anxiety and stress are natural. They can be great if you channel energy the right way. If you channel all your energy of anxiety into negativity, that's what's gonna grow. But imagine if you, if you channel it into action, your life is gonna change, the situation is gonna change, change is possible. But if you're stuck in victim mode, you're stuck. When you're stuck, nothing can happen. For anything to happen, it requires action, and that's why you gotta to move to action. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.